Ball, y'all. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. It is Friday night here, February 28th, 2020. The last Freakers Ball of 2020 for February. The last February Freakers Ball of 2020. That's what I meant to say. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, man, the uh, second month already clicked on by. It's just, wow. Yeah, that's what happens, though. That's what happens. Time just keeps on going, and, and we're just passing through as it's there. We just, woo. All right, so it is the last Freakers Ball of February, but it is still February. So that means it's still the donation drive month, so anybody wants to send any moolah, the direction of Real Liberty Media, feel free, and I encourage you to do so. Uh, there's a big donate button right there on reallibertymedia.com, right at the top, so you can't really miss it. Um, <laughs> now, I say this is a Freakers Ball show. However, the Moose Girl will more likely than not not be here with us this evening at any point. But I'm leaving it open for her because she is at home. She's just not... Um, she had some surgery yesterday, and so she's probably uh, not really ready to be talking on the radio as yet. So I uh, hope you feel better, Moose. Seriously, I uh, want you to get better as quick as possible and be happy and, and healthy and content and all that stuff. So send your good vibes out to Miss Moosey. Yes, indeed. Leap days tomorrow. <laughs> We got one more day, one more day of February. So the, the last, uh, the last uh, February Real Liberty Media RLM Radio show will be the Dork Table. Uh, so yeah, Dorks. <laughs> All right, so that's tomorrow. Uh, anyway, what else we got going on here? I did some work over on Freedom's Network this week. Uh, there were some things that were have been bothering me. Not not that. You know, I don't know how many Freedoms Network people we got left here. Five or five or six, I think, that are still over there on the Freedoms Network. But I, I did some updates and upgrades and modifications over there on Freedoms Network. So I thought I'd share with you. Um, we had been running over there uh, due to a little glitchy issue that was occurring um, as far as timestamps go uh, between a couple particular uh, different plugins. Um, so we'd been running an old, a four-year-old version of BuddyPress. That's what we use over there for the social networking stream feed thingy. Uh, anyway, so I, I went ahead and updated that. And then I updated this other plugin that had been given a problem. And it still had a problem. Um, and then uh, I fixed that so that it no longer, so that it always puts up the correct time, timestamps up there. But what happened when I did that... Um, was was uh, was this other option that I had hard coded in to the old version of uh, of BuddyPress there, which was a bump to top function, which would mean if if you had a posted something and then it moved on down the timeline there, and then somebody commented on it, I had it set so that it would bump that 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 thing up to the top to keep the conversation going on whatever people were talking about there. So that went away, and so I had to go back through and find my old code and redo that part. Uh, but I, I got it set now so that even if I do get another BuddyPress update up there, uh, it won't do it. Anyway, then today, night, good night, Dan. Oh, uh, anyway, then today, um, this morning I get up and uh, Estrella has this video she posted, uh, and it's a two-hour long video. Some guy, and she wants like 20, not 20 minutes, how many minutes? Three three minutes out of the middle of it, something like that. And, uh, and so she's asking me, hey, hey, how can I get these three minutes out of this? So I, I downloaded the video and I modified it for her. Uh, but then to post it up, uh, back up on uh, Freedom's Network, we, we didn't really have a, a capacity to do that unless I posted it somewhere else first. Now... You can post you can post your videos directly on on freedomsnetwork.com. So if you got any videos that you want to post, um, uh, and and you are a member of Freedoms Network, 
up on the top bar, the admin bar it's called, you'll see the, the plus new, and then you can go down and you'll see video there. And so you can go ahead and add a video that way. And, and then it'll, it'll post up automatically uh, into the gallery, the video gallery, but it'll also post on like a blog page for you. So uh, anyway, that's that about Freedoms Network. Uh, it's still growing. It's um, almost 500 people over there now. I know that's not huge or nothing, but uh, still people going on, man. <laughs> so freedomsnetwork.com. Uh, for those of you that are on realliberty.org, you might want to check out Freedoms Network as well. Um, and, you know, if you're not on either of those, maybe you're just on Minds or maybe you're on one of the mainstream ones. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Freedoms Network's cool. Uh, anyway, we, we, it's been going for a while now, so. All right, there's that on that. Anything on Real Liberty Media? Oh, I, I got this thing, this email from somebody about one of Hal's old shows from back in 2014 where he had linked uh, to an EFF document uh, where EFF no longer maintains or keeps up that document. Then in the document, and I'll, I'll share it with you later tonight, but that document's about uh, uh, encrypted messaging systems like wire. Um, and uh, and EFF had put a document up that about, whatever, six years ago? Um, anyway, so this, this uh, person sent me this thing, and, and they have a new document that they work on themselves. Uh, so I just modified that, but then I realized that for that particular, uh, well, for most of the old 2014 stuff, uh, the um, the podcasts are no longer up there. <laughs> so I put the I put that podcast back up there uh, for that show. A anyway, so uh, yeah, yeah, can't think of anything else. Any other Real Liberty Media news? RLM Radio is working fine. Haven't uh, still waiting on Prince to give me the information on when he's going to start his. Uh, new time show. Uh, we got two more shows of Lonnie Clark left next week, the fourth, and then the following week on on, on March 11, uh, which is the anniversary of Fukushima. That will be her final uh, show, not just here on Real Liberty Media, but overall uh, her her Age of Fission program. She's going to stop doing it um, after after what nine years, I think she said, of doing it, something like that. So uh, that that last one should be interesting, though, um, uh, for sure. Not that the other ones haven't been interesting. They've all been interesting to me. But uh, So that'll be it for Lonnie. So anybody that wants to do a show, let me know. Let me know. We'll get you a show set up. And, uh, you know, the, the hardest part, the hardest part. Obviously, if you want to just come on and you do one show and you don't want to really be part of the thing, I, I can set you up for that. I, I can do that for you. But if you want to do a regular show, there's a lot of time and effort involved in doing it. Um, a lot of prep for the show, hopefully. <laughs> not, not everybody does show prep. but <laughs> And sometimes those, those shows are even better than the ones that people prep for, like myself. Um, uh, so, <laughs> so, so not everybody does. But if you want to do a show, I can get you set up. Uh, just consider all of the aspects involved uh, in that. And, and it's your time, really, is, is what it comes down to, is your time. And some people are, are, like, bashful of speaking on this radio. And it's like, there's no reason. You're just talking to people. You're talking to the same people you would talk to in the chat. Or if you're not from here, if you come on over here and talk to people, you'll, it's nothing. It's just nothing. Talk to Charles Lamson. Lamson. He comes in here sometimes. <laughs> all right all right donna i'll talk to charles lamson i see him pop in from time to time and i've never really spoken with him but uh yeah i i'd be glad to get him on you know he can message me if i because like i'm kind of i i don't really i'm not really good at messaging people <laughs> i'm not really good at answering emails or phone calls or <laughs> any of that stuff but uh yeah i'd i'd, I'd be uh uh, go ahead to uh, speak with Mr. Lamson, Lamson there and uh, see about that. That'd be cool. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Anything else? Anything else? No, I think we're good. Uh, let's, let's do some music here. Get this show kicked off properly. And uh, we're going to kick it off with um, the Satch. <laughs> All right. 
There you go. Enjoy. I'll be back in a little bit here. Ah, yeah. Very nice there. Very nice. Let's see. Uh, playing for change people there. Doing their thing. Uh, with uh, Soul Rebel, from Bob Marley tune there. Uh, with Bunny Whaler and Manu Chow and uh, several others from around the world. If you're not familiar with the Playing for Change songs there, check them out. they got some really nice stuff. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Metallica, The Unforgiven. Uh, that was live in El Paso exactly one year ago tonight, February 28, 2019. And we kicked it off there with Joe Satriani, one of his new one in 1980 there. Uh, so I dig, I dig all that. And uh, sorry for messing you up, man. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry for switching it up like that on you, but uh, you know I do that. I do that here. I I, I don't always do theme thematic uh, sets. Um. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all right. I'll probably I'll probably do it some more to you there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we we'll, we'll, we'll get you some slow on this next one. We'll get you some slow. If that's what you're really looking for, we can do slow. We can do fast, we can do slow. It's it's not it's not really a matter of speed thing. Oh, by the way, and, and you know, I uh I didn't go through and say hi and howdy to all the folks here in the chat yet. So, let me just say right now, Hi to all the folks in the chat. <laughs> Normally, I I go I go through the thing at the top of the show, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I didn't do that tonight. So um, <laughs> slide that over there. That'll work out just fine. That'll work out just fine. So yeah, if you're in the chat and you're chatting, hi. If you're not in the chat, come on over, jump on in. It's a good time over here in uh, the chat. Um, Hansel jumps in and kills a duck and, and and catches a fish that have been forgotten in the stream, in the feed here in the chat. <laughs> anyway, howdy to Cowboy Keck, Rob Works, Hansel, uh, Frumpy, Donna, uh, Miss Kate, Cowboy, did I mention Cowboy Keck? I think I did. Uh, Dan, Dan, Dan from Tennessee was here earlier. And uh, let's see who else is chatting up here. Anybody? Romes. Romes. Uh, yeah, all kinds of people talking about all kinds of different stuff. I, I see, I think I seen Frumpy in here chatting it up. Uh, I don't know. Is Mike here? I don't know who all's here. But anyway, howdy and hi and welcome to y'all. And those of you that are here but not listening in, the, the sleepers, the sleepers over there in other countries, circle. <laughs> Prince who's not really in another country, but, you know, uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, hi and howdy to y'all. Glad you're all here with me on uh, this fine evening. Oh, we got stories to cover with you, man. Let me say, I got stories up the wazoo, and that's not really a comfortable place for them. Um, okay, I, I saw this just before the show, and I, I know uh, you people are saying, "Who? Who the hell is this guy? I never heard of him." Uh, but but I I, I do follow the uh, the global wa global warming policy forum uh which is basically a, a a good site to go for information about how bad the climate craziness is they, they call it science but eh, you know whatever anyway the founder of the global warming policy forum forum freeman dyson uh passed away today 96 years old so he he survived a good a good long life uh according to this article here uh, Freeman Dyson was was one of the world's most eminent theoretical physicists, and uh, and he be gone now. So uh, rest in peace, Freeman. He was born in England on the fifteenth of December, nineteen twenty three. Dyson graduated from Cambridge in nineteen forty five with a B.A. in mathematics. Nineteen forty seven, he moved to the U.S. where he worked uh, went to work at Cornell University, and later in the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton. Uh, Dyson was a professor. Dyson, excuse me, uh, was a dedicated supporter of the Global Warming Policy Forum and a founding member of the GWPF's Academic Advisory Council. He will be sorely missed. 
So uh, there's much more to the bio story, whatever you want to call it, there. But uh, <laughs> that's right, California. It's it's kind of like another country. <laughs> there he is. There he is. So uh, once again, rest in peace, Mr. Dyson. Freeman, what a great name, too. Freeman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happens. 96 years old, man. That's pretty good. Pretty darn good. That's pretty darn good. Okay, now, some of y'all know I've been, I, I have railed against the fake meat. Um, he's, the, I think he is the one that did the Dyson Sphere. I can't be positive on that. But uh, I know he did a lot of good uh, writing over there uh, for for the forum, for the Global Warming Policy Forum. So, uh, anyway, whatever. He's gone now, so, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, you know I've uh, railed against the fake meats over the time since they started pushing them out to the mainstream and masses. Well, here's some possibly good news, but probably not good news. Eh, you know, it's a little setback is the way I'm looking at this, because, well, they're really pushing it hard. And again, well, not again, let me just say, Beyond Meat posts profit miss, dragged by investment marketing cost, shares fall. Uh, the Beyond Meat Incorporated on Thursday missed quarterly earning expectations due to higher costs, said Executive Chairman Seth Goldman, would give up his executive status while remaining chair of the board, sending shares down 10% in our af after hours trade. Uh, the plant-based meat, talk about your oxymorons. It's plant. It's not plant-based meat. There's nothing meat about it. <laughs> the plant-based meat company said uh, deals with retailers and restaurants substantially narrowed its loss and boosted sales, but Beyond Meat reported a 1% share loss during the period versus analyst expectations of a 1% profit. According to, uh, according to, according to, really, who wrote this? <laughs> Refinitive IBS data, I mean ES data, Beyond Meat has never recorded a yearly profit, never profit, due to spending and R&D, marketing, and its fast-paced international expansion. In what most recent, uh, it's in the most recent quarter, the company's restructuring and some administrative costs were higher. Anyway, that's really all you need to know is that uh, they missed their mark, their shares fell. Um, I would like to see them fall and go away, but odds are, odds are they're they're not going to go away. So um, there you go. Beyond meat, beyond food, is what they should be called. It's not food. I don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> it's uh, it's stuff you should be feeding to cows, not feeding to humans instead of cows. Ah. Now this our our next article here also. Does my heart extremely well. Makes me very happy. Very happy to see. We'll see how far it goes, but I think it's it's unlimited. Uh, unlimited at this point because people are really down on the petroleum uh petroleum based plastics. And and so this is terrific. And I've talked about hemp hemp based plastic for a long time here. Anyway, here it is, from UPI.com. Products made from hemp-based plastics enter consumer market. And they got a picture here showing some toothbrushes. Uh, anyway, uh, fr from toothbrushes at Luxury Island Resorts to 3D printing filament, products made from hemp-based plastics are popping up in consumer products since the crop was made legal. <laughs> just last year or the end of last year the end of no uh, the end of 2018 <laughs> put it that way the end of yeah yeah we're in a new year uh, so uh for the first time in 80 years they are the latest generation of bioplastics which are plastic materials produced from renewable sources such as agricultural byproducts 
straw, wood chips, sawdust, recycled food waste, and now hemp. I love hemp. Hemp seems to satisfy some plant-based uh, plastic researchers looking for alternatives to plastic waste that has filled landfills and oceans. Hemp fiber, for example, is used uh, in one of the plant-based plastics developed by Chad Alden, associate professor and of mechanical engineering from North Dakota State University. Um, there, there's a craze, a craze, I say, around the, around being able to grow hemp finally in the U.S. and 3D print and play with the material. Uh, his work furthers research with a polyactic acid, a resin created from corn by byproducts. It is formulated with organic fillers like coffee and beer waste, flax, which is also wonderful stuff, cotton, seed hulls, and even charred industrial carbon. Hemp-based plastics are now expanding in both injection mold and 3D additive manufacturing. Hemp-based filaments, a uh, melted and layered 3D printer creates a caramel-colored plastic surface flecked with organic specks, said John Schneider, CEO of 3D Fuel, a printer filament company based in Fargo and Ireland. Uh, customers use it to print custom decor items like lampshades and vases. We see a lot of people who use it for specialty parts, especially in the cannabis industry. Schneider said. These include frames for promotional sunglasses, as well as retail fixtures such as hinges and product sale stands. It took a while for the Denver-based sauna packaging chief, uh, executive Ron Basak-Smith, to locate a source for hemp-based biocomposites or plastics with hemp fillers to make sustainable packaging for cannabis. Now sauna uses hemp plastic and recycled ocean plastic made with injection molds. The company sells to 200 cannabis companies. So you have cannabis packaged in hemp. Cannabis packaged in hemp. <laughs> because of the ability to easily produce plastics, we got ourselves into the single-use disposable culture, and that caused a dysfunctional system. The infrastructure to produce petroleum plastics grew up as a way to use byproducts of the oil industry and has led to a culture of single-use disposable products. That can't be changed overnight. Uh, the industry has been so huge and such an impact on our daily lives. I tell my students to try to get through a single day without using plastics. It is impossible. Impossible. <laughs> anyway, the article goes on and describes a lot of the various uses of the plastics. And I say, and as I've said from the beginning, when they started out with these idiotic straw bands, just uh, just use hemp. Just use hemp plastic. What are you banning straws when you could just make them out of a better, a better substance? One that will biodegrade out there. So it's terrific. I, I, I really love to see that. I love hemp. Hemp is awesome. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Uh, huh, let's see. Yeah, eighty years of prohibition. That's right, man. That's just craziness. Uh, on, on, uh, just and that's just on the hemp. But uh, Hans is saying, uh, if if you want to eat deer, you need to shoot them through both lungs and the heart. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> then you use hemp rope to hoist them back up by the back logs, so legs. He can get them. Hemp rope works well as it is inexpensive and you can throw it out when you're finished. You could, but it's good. It's good. It's a good rope. It, uh, it's it's a long-lasting rope as well. Um, so there's that. Okay, I, I was mentioning to you earlier that uh, somebody had uh, sent me an email about uh, one of the links on one of Hal Anthony's Behind the Woodshed blog uh, blogcaster posts that he did back in 2014 from a EFF version um, describing various um, secure messaging, encrypted messaging platforms. So this guy, this other company here, Comparatech, uh, Comparatech.com, uh, sent me this link. I, I guess they must have searched the interwebs for for where where that old link was going, and one of the links came back here to Real Liberty Media. Anyway, 
So uh, Comparatech goes through, uh, it says here, the best encrypted messaging apps and their limitations in 2020. There are so many different messaging apps on offer, and the difference can be highly technical. Check out our guide for a simple rundown of which apps you should be using to keep your data secure and private. Uh, by the way, uh, Hal, if you're listening out there, um, I went went into your your post there and, and updated your link. Um, I forget what the day was. I could check my email later and, and see when that was. But uh, at, at some point, you went through and posted an EFF link. And that, if you follow that EFF link through, which I did, it uh, goes to a 404 page. So I, I put their link in instead. And I might as well. It's new and up to date. And also, I, I reposted your... Uh, the uh, podcast for, from that show. Uh, I, I still have all those, uh, your your podcasts from the beginning on my hard drive here, uh, even though I think they're only from 2016 that are up on the server. Anyway, so you want to know which is the best encrypted messaging app. Unfortunately, it's not that simple because apps that are ideal in some circ circumstances often have to make trade-offs that make them less practical in others. This means the best app will depend on the situation, so you're still going to need several different options to provide you with the right mixture of practicality and appropriate security levels for any given conversation. And I'll say this. I'll, I'll say this. Um, what I, I am only using Wire now. Um, I, I've tried several others and went through several others, uh, and, and they all had their benefits and detriments. Um, but but they're kind of like left out there in the cold. Wire is still being uh, developed uh, actively, and, and it still has support if you have that. Uh, you know, if you if you pay for it, I don't pay for it, and nobody has to pay for it. By the way, uh, if you go to their main page, you won't find the link to the free version of Wire. But if you go to reallibertymedia.com dot com's homepage, you'll see a link that says Get Wire, and if you click that, it'll take you right to the free version. Uh, anyway, so um, why use encrypted messaging? I think we all know that answer. I'm not going to go through that. The perfect encrypted messaging app. If we could make a dream app, it would combine a variety of different features. But unfortunately, uh, reality gets in the way and forces us to make compromises. Nevertheless, the perfect app would be able to communicate with everyone. Ideally, we would want just one app that could we could use to contact everyone. As it stands, we go through the annoyance of switching between apps, texts, emails, and calls when we communicate with our friends, family, and colleagues. It would be more efficient if we could just do it all in one place. Theoretically, this could be accomplished in two ways. The first is, is, is if everyone has and uses a universal messaging app, which... Then again, there's a problem with that because if everybody's on the same thing, then then you know they they get involved. The alternative would be for a single app to be able to send messages to all the other apps, which depending on the APIs, you may or may not be able to. Anyway, getting down uh, here to the actual apps, <laughs> the best encrypted messaging apps. Now that we have discussed the ideal features of a secure message messaging app, we can begin to analyze the more common apps for their positive and negative attributes. We will start by covering several security-focused apps, and then move I'm not going to go through all that. Um, <laughs> number one, Signal. Let me start with Signal, which is often seen as the gold standard when it comes to encrypted messaging apps. I will tell you, I tried Signal, and I was not impressed with it. I didn't like it. And I do believe they made you give a phone number of some sort to sign up. Uh, which they say is strictly to prevent duplicate peop you know duplicate uh, accounts by the same person which a phone number obviously doesn't do but whatever so it's got a lot going for it security wise although it's not perfect and some alternatives may have individual features that certain users prefer anyway I'll just I'll just give you the names here uh that's good enough a signal is number 1 wire wire is number 2 um, and it says wire is less popular than signal. Eh, but but uh, I, I certainly do like it better. Um, uh, yeah, and you don't have to give them any kind of phone number or anything. Uh, number three is called Wicker, W-I-C-K-R. Um, it's a, one of the older security-focused apps 
feature, uh, featuring messaging, video calls, uh, photo sharing, da da da. Um, Wicker Me is a free messaging app. Wicker Pro is one you pay for. Uh, well, they have they have both free and paid options for Wicker Pro and Wicker Enterprise is you know if you're a huge corporation and you want something like that. Um, well, they got a lot of information there. Number four, Riot. I also tried Riot and did not like it. Riot takes a different approach to the previously discussed apps and is probably best left to power users at the moment, which means if you're trying to get other friends to hook up with you on Riot, it's probably not going to happen. Um, WhatsApp. WhatsApp is horrible. Now, I don't even know how WhatsApp got in there. <laughs> not that signal, Rome's <laughs> WhatsApp uh, is horrible. I, I don't even know how this got in here. Um, they say that WhatsApp is a... a different security focused app it's not it's terrible it's it's you know, don't use whatsapp telegram eh, it's okay for some things i i use telegram for certain cryptocurrency discussions uh that i have but telegram it's just hokey uh darkestly <laughs> I use Discord far far more than I use Telegram, and a lot a lot more of the cryptocurrency people are using Discord, and I, I don't you know I don't really care too much about Discord either, other than to keep up with my various cryptocurrencies. Uh, iMessage is an Apple product, uh, so if you have Apple, I guess iMessage might be a something for you if you only want to talk to other Apple people. Facebook Messenger, crazy! How, how could this possibly be? uh security at all um so uh yeah don't 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 use that either anyway so those are the apps that it talks about there uh wire 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 let me just suggest to you wire and and to get the free version like i said go to real dot com uh, up on the menu bar you'll see a link there that says get wire click that you can hook up, hook up on wire. And if you want, if you get on the wire and you want to talk to me for any reason or just message me, um, then uh, add me as a, as a as a person. I am the at symbol Grimnir there on wire. And uh, you can certainly find me that way. <laughs> All right. All right, let's do some more music. <laughs> Yeah, I would imagine Telegram is, uh, Rome said he read Telegram is being used for a lot of phishing. Uh, on Discord, they try that too. Uh, I, I get messages, I don't know, maybe a couple times a week on Discord from somebody saying, hey, you won 0.3 of a Bitcoin. Just put in your all your information here and you'll get your 0.3 of a Bitcoin. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Just for being on Discord, we're going to give you some free stuff once you tell us, give us all your private keys. Or I, I don't know what they wanted. I, I had never followed through on them. I just, I just delete and block those people. Um. <laughs> yeah, right. You're going to give me uh, whatever it is, $300 or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that, thanks for that, uh, Rooms. Uh, yeah, a blog from CEX, CEXIO, who I don't trust either, but a blog from them. Uh, do not become a victim um, of scams in the Telegram crypto communities. Yeah, CEX, man. <laughs> they screwed me. They screwed me bad uh, back when they were doing that their own little coin, man. I just, uh, anyway, whatever. <laughs> All right, kicking it off here, we got the Scorpions. Old scorpions. You betcha, baby. Thank you very much. No, thank you, Samantha. <laughs> Samantha Fish there. Uh, chills and a fever. It doesn't say where that was recorded. Uh, it, was, it was a live version. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't say here on the video where that where that was recorded at. Uh, anyway, uh, great stuff. <laughs> I love that girl. All right, before that, we had Raba Zombie with a Ging Gang Gong De Do Gong Da Laga Raga with your friend Rob Motherfucking Zombie. And we kicked it off there. The Scorpions, Lonesome Crow. That's off a really old album. Uh, 74, something like that, I think. 
when that album came out. I, I forget, but uh, yeah, I always dug that album too as well. Also, <laughs> all right, hey, Beth Z, Beth Z, where you at? We miss you. I know you're out there listening. I know you're out there. <laughs> Come on over to the chat. Say hi and howdy to the folks. Uh, oh wow, that's oh, okay. Good. Wow. All right. Um, <laughs> yes, she is out there, Beth Z. I miss my sis. Yep. All right. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> I ain't telling you how I know she's out there, but I just do. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, very catchy. Very catchy. If you like that kind of thing. And I do. I kind of, I'm kind of, I'm getting into the, the catchy, the catchy tunes. Well, the ones that aren't too popish, you know. <laughs> oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of whatever this one is. That's all right. We'll play it anyway. Let's see if we got out which one we got here. Yeah, that should do the trick. All right. Let's see what, what else. Come on over to the chat desk. Say hi. All right. Um, oh, boy. So much Corona stories. I'm, I'm trying to... Ah, hell, we might as well just cover, cover some of these... Uh, corona stories since I got them all. They're, they're just lined up. Corona, 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 Corona. All right. We'll start with this one. Not for any particular reason, other than the fact that a friend of mine called me the other day uh, and asked him, hey, uh, I'm trying to find some of these uh, masks at a, at a good price. Cowboy Texas. Hi, Beth. Uh, I'm trying to find some of these masks at a good price and I can't find them anywhere. Um, <laughs> because the prices of these masks have all shot through the freaking roof. And she uses them for allergies. She has, she has allergies. And, and so when she goes out and starts doing gardening stuff, and it's, be, you know, getting towards uh, the end of the, the winter and towards the beginning of the spring stuff, which is where the allergy stuff starts popping up. So she just uses them as allergy masks. Anyway, I, I explained to her how she could make her own out of a out of a paper towel, uh, fan folded with. Uh, uh, then you use a rubber band on each end, and you staple the rubber band, and you just put that behind your ears, and you uh, put 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 the, put the thing over your face. It's the same same idea, and uh, you know you're not trying to keep out any little tiny uh, microorganisms. Well, uh, you know some some of the pollen's kind of small, but nowhere near as small as a as a, a flu germ or other ones like that, so they'll work just fine. And even for, uh, you know, just, just regular use, if, if you feel like for whatever reason you need to have a mask on your face to protect your, you from getting stuff, uh, you could use the paper towel thing. If you, like, double it up, uh, then it'll catch a lot more. Um, and you can still breathe really well through it. So, uh, anyway, it's cheap and it's easy and, it, and it's, it's stuff you got at your house. Rubber bands and a paper towel and a stapler. Um, <laughs> so there you go. All right, so uh, from Wired.com, as COVID-19 spreads, Amazon tries to curb mask price gouging. Gouging! Now, it's not just, by the way, uh, sidebar, uh, it's not just gouging on, on, the, on the masks. It's uh, gouging on all kinds of various things that you might uh, think are something. Why would somebody do that? But they do. Uh and also, there's a lot of scams going on out there uh, for people because they know people fear stuff. They they fear the virus, and you really shouldn't. There's really no reason to fear the virus. You know, if you get it, if you're in reasonably decent health, uh, if you're not already like uh, suffering from some other kind of lung ailment, uh, respiratory system ailment, then you're gonna be fine. Uh, and you're and you're gonna recover from it if you do happen to get it, which is still at this point highly unlikely. Not that it's not gonna spread out. Not that the pharma com companies don't want it to spread out because they certainly do, um, so that they can sell more and more vaccines and other things, which 
they say is in the pipeline, but you know they already have ready to go um, since it was a lab-created virus, the corona. Um, and, and it's basically a branch of SARS, more or less, only uh, more communicable and less deadly. Far less deadly and far more communicable. <laughs> All right. So anyway, sellers report receiving messages from the company that their face masks are too expensive, while users on Amazon forum debate the ethics of raising prices during emergencies. Again, not really an emergency, just a lot of people freaking out. They've become an iconic symbol of the spreading epidemic, or pandemic at this point, I guess, as the world struggles to contain the COVID-19 coronavirus disease. Social media ad news sites have flooded with pictures of people donning protective masks while they go about their daily lives, making city streets and shopping malls look more like hospitals. Mask shortages are now affecting some countries, and suppliers are working overtime to keep up with demand. On Amazon, prices for the devices, they call them devices, I guess it's a device, um, have sharply increased in recent weeks, and the company has warned sellers not to raise them to exorbitant levels or risk getting kicked off the site. Amazon has alerted merchants about face masks that are not in compliance with its pricing policies, uh, regardless of their effectiveness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, according to an email provided by Two Wired, one consultant who works with Amazon sellers said that listings for overpriced face masks have been deleted from the site. The topic of coronavirus and price gouging has also been hotly debated among users on Amazon's official selling forum over the past week. In a statement sent after publication, a spokesman for Amazon said the company was disappointed that bad actors are attempting to artificially raise prices on basic needs uh, products during a global health crisis. Again, not a global health crisis. Uh, and in line with our long-standing policy, we have recently blocked or removed tens of thousands of offers. Um, on Tuesday, Reuters reported that authorities in Italy, which has seen what is so far the biggest outbreak of the disease, which is not that big, uh, in Europe, were opening an investigation into the insane online prices for medical supplies, though without naming any sites. While the CDC warned Americans Tuesday that an outbreak was likely to spread to the United States, the agency does not currently recommend the general public use face masks. Experts say proper hand washing is often more important to prevent the spread of the disease. If you're going to be dealing with people face-to-face, -face, which is not something I prefer to do and avoid doing it at all, many is uh, almost all times, um, then uh, you know you might want to consider. If you think uh, you're in a zone where some of this is going on, currently in New Mexico, there are zero, zero coronavirus cases. Uh, doesn't mean it's not coming here, but uh, so far none. Anyway, the, best, the top best seller at Amazon's medical face mask category, a package of 100 generic blue disposable masks is going for $15, which doesn't seem too bad. But that's almost four times what it cost only a few weeks ago, according to data from uh, Keepa, a company that tracks prices on Amazon. More expensive are so-called N95 respirators, which, unlike looser fitting masks, keep out small airborne particles and are most often used to protect against airborne transmission. The price of a box of 20 particulate respirators made by 3M and sold, in independ uh, sold by independent merchants has almost quadrupled from $17 to $70 since the end of January when the coronavirus thing really started to spark up. A package of 20 respirators made by Honeywell, another major supplier also sold by third parties, has quintupled 
from $12.40 to $64. Representatives from both 3M and Honeywell say they have not raised their list prices for their products, but they cannot control how much third parties charge. Well, they could, actually. They could say, tell those third parties, if you're charging too much, you're no longer one of our, uh, you're not going to be able to buy our products, but eh, they don't really want to do that. Um, anyway, it's, it's, it's like that across the board on uh, anything, um, whether, whether it be certain vitamins or uh, other, other such things uh, that, that, uh, that, yeah, I, I don't know what Micron's handkerchiefs are. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure that a, a paper towel will give you a little better protection than a handkerchief. <laughs> anyway, so there's there's that there. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, there's more to the story, more links, uh, more things going on. Um, and again, just beware. Uh, don't freak out. Over coronavirus, it's it's not. Uh, you're probably not going to get it, and if you do get it, you'll probably be fine, uh, just fine. I, I I mean, most people recover from this, and it may take a little longer than your average cold or uh, your average flu, probably. But uh, the best thing to do is stay away from people. And certainly keep your hands clean as, as best as possible. That's a, that's a, you know, even though it comes from the CDC, it comes from everybody else too. It's a good suggestion. And uh, just try and, you know, stay away from people's breath, <laughs> if nothing else. <laughs> people, humans are filthy animals. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Okay, so earlier today, and, and, I, and this was probably out there before as well, um, and, and, and I hate uh, putting up anything from the, from the CNN, but luckily, um, just before the show, uh, Kate posted a, a link in the chat to um, dispel the, 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 the link that was put up by CNN. Oh, by the way, I also I saw a chart earlier today. I don't, I don't think I have a link to the chart. I don't think I saved it. But showing... Uh, the age of people that get it and the, the age of people that have problems with it. And young kids and young people up through your 40s, basically, you got no problem. Once you get to 50, you start getting a little problem. 60 through, you know, 70, it gets a little more. If you're 80 or over, you, you start getting some big problems. Um, but that, that's not going to just be because of coronavirus. It, it's going to be because of uh, uh, any any respiratory issue that you might wind up with. Um, so just, just bear that in mind, uh, that keep yourself and your your respiratory system, your circulatory system, all, all of your systems should be healthy. <laughs> anyway, CNN earlier today posted this up up on their business site. Uh, the spread of coronavirus could not come of a worse time for Corona beer. So they say Corona beer isn't making any changes to its advertising, despite the name's unfortunate similarity to the Corona deadly, deadly coronavirus. Constellation Brands, which brews several variations of a popular lager, said in a statement that its customers understand there is no link between the virus and our business. Sales of Corona remain very strong, and we appreciate the continued support from our fans. Um, anyway, getting down to the meat of the of the substance here, um, they said that uh, where, where where's their numbers at here? Um, <laughs> I thought they had the numbers in here. I was sure they did. They said something like 28. Oh, oh, here it is. Is this it? No, that's not it. Somewhere in this article, I thought uh, was the numbers. They said like. 28% of the population thinks that Corona beer causes coronavirus. No, that's not what they said at all. Um, I mean, that's not that's not the truth at all. <laughs> and they said uh, another X amount percent uh, just uh, don't like the, you know, they, they'll stay away from the beer, even though it's a, a, a brand they like or whatever. Um, 
Anyway, so th this is basically talking about, oh, there it is, 38%. Five W Public Relations said that 38% of Americans would not buy Corona under any circumstances, and they add, because of the outbreak. But that's not true. They just won't buy it for, uh, under any circumstances. Like my, I myself, I'm not going to buy Corona. I wouldn't have bought Corona last year, and I won't buy it next year. <laughs> Another 14% said they would not order a corona in public. No corona for me in public. Oh, I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm on that 14% as well. Um, anyway, the, the survey encompasses polling from 737 beer drinkers in the United States. So I, I doubt I would be considered a beer drinker. I, the last time I had a beer has been a few years ago at this point now. Um, <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> all right. What do we what do we what do we got here? <coughs> Is that a picture of Donald Trump there, Cyborg Noodle? Looks like a picture of Donald Trump. <laughs> all right, all right. No, I do not want you to autoplay video. <laughs> All right, so that's that's the story from from CNN. And then just before the show, Kate posted a link over there in the chat debunking not only that Corona story but other stories as well dealing with coronavirus myths. <laughs> First off, no, Trump did not cut the CDC's coronavirus budget or any other budget of the CDC. No. People are not blaming Corona beer for the disease. Coronavirus misinformation is spreading faster than the disease itself. <laughs> misinformation about COVID-19, a, a type of coronavirus, is spreading almost as fast as the virus. This is on Reason.com, by the way. Uh, it is spreading almost as fast as the virus itself. And that's really saying something considering that an estimated 80,000 people worldwide are now infected. Here's a quick look at some of the fake news that's circulating in the worrisome sneeze on a crowd, crowded airliner. Um, no, the CDC's budget has not been cut. During Tuesday's, uh, they call this a debate, the Democratic Democratic primary debate, which not a debate. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. Several candidates, including former Vice President Biden, uh, former New York City Mayor Bloomberg, and Senator, uh, what, what do you call her? Pocahontas, um, accused the Trump administration of cutting funding from the CDC that impaired America's readiness for a pandemic. There's plenty to, criti to critique about the way the Trump administration has handled the outbreak so far. Mike Pence, virus star? Seriously. <laughs> but the attack is inaccurate. Trump has proposed budget cuts for the CDC in each of his budgets since taking office, but Congress never approved of those proposals. Trump's most recent budget plan calls for a 16% cut to the CDC, but that budget has yet to be approved by Congress. It's fair to say that Trump has tried to defund the CDC, but it's inaccurate to say that he has succeeded, or that those uh, fictitious cuts have, been, have affected the agency's ability to respond to COVID-19. When Trump was asked about those budget cuts, uh, and about firing firing some of the top CDC officials at Wednesday's press, press briefing on the virus, he offered a pretty good defense. I'm a business person. I don't like having thousands of people around when you don't need them. Yeah, just chair stuffers, basically, uh, said Trump. When we need them, we get them back, like in a minute, maybe 10 minutes. But they'll come back right away. Indeed, there's a, uh, that's a good way for government to operate. No, Corona beer is not responsible for the virus, and most people, you would think, know that. <laughs> it, seems, it seems nuts to have to point this out, but incredibly, some people 
seem incapable of distinguishing a deadly respiratory illness that emerged in China from a golden-hued Mexican beer of the same name. <laughs> Citing a consumer survey from 5W Public Relations, CNN, which a uh, name you can trust, reported on Friday that 38% of Americans would not buy Corona under any circumstances because of the outbreak. Constellation Brands, the, uh, the Cabo conglomerate that owns coronavirus, has been... Uh, has seen its stock fall by more than 8% since the outbreak of the coronavirus. But most Americans are smart enough to tell the difference. What the survey actually says is that only 4% of beer drinkers would not buy Corona because of the outbreak. Now, I don't know who these 4% are, but if they're not buying a beer because of something like a name in common, they're crazy. So... <laughs> 38% figure reported by CNN is the number of people who say they would not buy Corona for any reason whatsoever. Forget it. I don't want their beer. <laughs> oh, the beard one. <laughs> the beard one. Uh, apparently, and I, I might have a link on this too, uh, the CDC the other day uh, put out this chart about about people with beards need to shave their beards Oh, here it is. Yeah, for, uh, I got I got this on uh, on uh, another site here. I'll I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> the CDC said you have to shave your beard to protect against the coronavirus. But again, that was reported on CNN. Come on, CNN, the network that's supposed to be the most trusted name in news, also gets blamed for this misleading story uh, and, and, and <laughs> tricking their viewers into thinking uh, that they could fight the coronavirus with a razor. This chart, which CNN misleadingly said the CDC was publishing for coronavirus safety, shows which type of facial hair can be fitted under a respirator mask. Other outlets, including the New York Post, picked up the story as well. Except one thing you might want to consider. That chart was created by the CDC as a guidance for doctors participating in No Shave November, a prostate, a prostate cancer awareness campaign. It is not, was not, is not a guide for preventing the spread of coronavirus. No. There is not a shortage of medical equipment in the United States. Ah, is there any problem the Trump administration doesn't believe can be solved with a centrally planned industrial policy? Maybe, but the coronavirus isn't it. Reuters reported on Friday afternoon that the Trump administration is considering invoking special powers through a law called Defense Production Act to rapidly expand domestic manufacturing of protective masks and clothing to combat the coronavirus. The law was originally passed in 1950 to ensure the U.S. could requ requisition necessary supplies. The White House reportedly considering this action because fears that Chinese supply chains for protective masks and other medical equipment could be disrupted by the coronavirus spread. Very little of this stuff is apparently made in the U.S., so we're down to the old uh, domestic capability to produce. That could be tough. Uh, the FDA says there is little evidence to suggest those fears will come true. We are aware of 63 manufacturers, which represent 72 facilities in China, that produce essential medical devices. We have contacted all of them, the agency said in a statement on Friday. While the FDA continues to assess whether manufacturing disruptions will affect overall market availability of these products, the, there are currently no reported shortages of these types of medical devices within the United States. <sighs> However, <laughs> there, there are, there's much fear, much fear of uh, coronavirus and other 
such things here in the good old U.S. of A., uh, which is being noticed, if you will. Um, oh, I already did that one. Uh, what? 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 Oh. <laughs> uh, by the stock market. The stock market. I don't have a story on this, but the stock market dropped like 4,000, 5,000 points this week. Uh, the Dow Jones, uh, which is great, great, really. I mean, it, it really needed to, and it really needs to go another 10,000 more down, at least. Um, but anyway, the, the CDC story, which is on TucsonWeekly.com uh, here, which uh, under their news in science heading, um, <laughs> talks about the... Uh, uh, you want to you want to shave your beard, which my immediate response to that was "fuck you." I ain't shaving my beard. <laughs> anyway, so it says CDC says to shave beard to protect against coronavirus. Nope, they didn't say any such thing. Uh, but bad news for Elvis impersonators. What did Elvis have a beard? Anyway, Civil War reenactors and our bearded brethren across the world. But good news for Gillette. The CDC uh, recommends shaving your beard to protect yourself from potential coronavirus outbreak. Beards and mutton chops uh, sideburns can interfere with the seal of a face piece respirator mask, according to a new CDC infographic. Okay, not that new, not for this purpose. Uh, the circle beard, the Fu Manchu, and the chin strap and other facial styles recommended for shaving by the CDC. The bottom line is the facial hair should not make any contact with the respirator seal service, according to the infographic. Now, I, I, <laughs> I would just say that anybody that saw this posting uh, and saw that it came from CNN and followed through was what this said, which means they went ahead and shaved their beards due to this, should sue CNN and claim millions of dollars of mental distress. Because, what the hell? <laughs> That's just messed up. That's wrong. Getting people to shave their freaking beards. <laughs> <laughs> for, for a stupid thing like that. But, you know, uh, I guess if you're that dumb, maybe you get what you deserve. I don't know. I, uh, whatever. All right, we're going to go back to some music here. Um, yeah, I haven't seen Moosey pipe up, so uh, maybe she's sleeping. And probably still not feeling all that well out there, you know. Uh, that that had to take a lot out of her, that, uh, that operation, so... Um, yeah. All right, this is Judas Priest. Oh yeah. <laughs> that, that was a, that was a Rome's request. There, uh, a band is called Stoned Jesus, and the song is "Here Come the Robots." So uh, yeah, thanks for that, Rome's. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, before that, we had the Black Angels with entrance song. I love that band, Black Angels band. Um, just, just great. Uh, and and uh, that song too, the entrance song is a great song. So uh, yeah, and we kicked it off with Judas Priest, the Hellion, uh, off of uh, Electric Eye, off of their uh, Live Vengeance album back in 1982. So yeah, yeah, good stuff. All right, <laughs> man, I tell you coronavirus stuff just just drives me nuts that it's becoming such a thing you know it shouldn't be such a thing i, 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 I just i'm trying to trying to understand people but people freak out you know people don't trust government and then government tells them that this is this deal and then suddenly they're all freaked out about it and why why then are people freaked out over something that the these people they don't trust told them I, I, I'm missing. I'm missing something. I'm missing something. That's for sure. <laughs> oh man, stealthily and in. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I, 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 
I'm being, and I'm not, I'm not, not that I'm being asked, the question is being asked uh, there in uh, the chat of why do they put that there? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Well, if you're not in the chat, you probably don't understand what I'm talking about. That's all right. That's really all right. Um, oh, let me see if I can do it here. Uh, uh, apparently, there's four new coronavirus cases in the Pacific Northwest suggesting community spread, uh, meaning not travelers, since that's Washington State, uh, too. He says, the case, these cases raise the specter that the virus may be spreading stealthily in, oh, there's an extra space there, I see. Yeah, uh, they just fucked up. In the Pacific Northwest region of the country. I, I don't know why they put the extra space in there. They screwed up, that's all. Um. <laughs> you should see some of the stuff that you if you actually read through um, some of the things. Well, I said I didn't have any stories about the uh, the stock market uh, as as it related to the coronavirus, but uh, let, let's give you one. Let's give you one story here because this drives me nuts. Uh, Powell, Jerome Powell the head of the Federal Reserve at this moment, says the Fed will act soon, act as soon, act as needed to respond to the coronavirus. Uh, Fed Reserve Chair Jerome Powell on Friday said, wait, what? Uh, said, uh, said the United States economy remains in solid condition, although the coronavirus outbreak poses a risk and the central bank will act as appropriate to provide support. So they're going to print their way. They're going to print the virus away. <laughs> the fundamentals of the U.S. economy remain strong. Huge lie. It's never been strong. Well, not in this century. Uh, Powell said in a statement, released amid ongoing sell-off in global stock markets. However, the coronavirus poses evolving risks to economic activity. The Federal Reserve is closely monitoring developments and their implication for the economic outlook. We will use our tools and act as an appropriate as appropriate to support the economy. So just basically print money haphazardly. Just just go crazy printing money and that'll fix everything. But what happens when nobody can get any products because all of the uh, all, all the all the all the support lines from China have been shut off? That, that there's where your problem lies. And it's not anything to do with your money, your fake money. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh man. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll save that one for later. Okay, moons. Moons! Yeah, moons. Apparently, and they're calling this a, a moon, but I said it might be, even though they call it a mini moon, I think it's a bit of a stretch. Um, <laughs> but that's what they're calling it. From the DenverChannel.com Is there a mini moon orbiting the Earth? Observers find the object in orbit around the Earth, a mini-moon. Scientists working for NASA-funded project at the University of Arizona said that a possible mini-moon is currently orbiting the Earth. Kuiper Warshako of Catalina Sky Survey uh, tweeted this week that an object, 2020 CD3, has been captured by Earth's gravitational pull and is temporarily in orbit orbit around the Earth. The object is not very large, only 6 to 11 feet, where Chasco said, uh, but he added it's still an extraordinary discovery. 6 to 11 feet. Not a moon. <laughs> it says, it's a big deal, as out of 1 million known asteroids, this is just the second asteroid known to orbit Earth after 2006 RH-120, which was also discovered by the same Catalina Sky Survey. Uh, 2020 CD3 began orbiting the Earth three years ago. And why is it called 2020? 
Uh, Elon Musk, the head of Tesla, jokingly tweeted, it's not mine. Tesla sent a roadster into space in uh, 2018. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's a moon. Yeah, not really a moon. <laughs> it's a rock. It's a a boulder, maybe. Maybe it's a boulder. Not a moon. Not even a mini moon. I, I would not classify or qualify it as that. Of course, what do these idiots know? They said Pluto's not a planet. <laughs> all right. Covered up in all of the coronavirus stuff um, is, is a uh, is a is a story about the, the locust swarms going on over in uh, east or parts of Asia. Uh, and and uh, Africa and, and uh, some other places, Arabia, uh, some of those areas. So uh, to um, battle those locust swarms, which are huge, by the way, if you've not heard about or read about uh, India, yeah, all those, uh, also parts of Asia, um, if you've not heard about those um, those swarms, uh, because you're paying attention to other stuff. Uh, maybe you might want to uh, consider looking them up uh, because they are big and they are they are quite uh, dramatic. Uh, and, and anyway, this article on BBC dot com not slash news there. China may send ducks to battle Pakistan's locust swarms. So let me just say to all of you in the chat there that have befriended armies of ducks, you might have a use for those ducks now. <laughs> China could deploy 100,000 ducks to neighboring Pakistan to help tackle swarms of crop-eating locusts, according to reports. Pakistan declared an emergency earlier this month, saying locust numbers were worst uh, in more than two decades. The agricultural expert behind the scheme says a single duck can eat more than 200 locusts a day and can be more effective than pesticides. However, another researcher questioned whether ducks would be effective. Millions of insects have also uh, been devastating crops in other parts of East, East Africa, or parts of East Africa. The, the Chinese government announced this week it was sending teams of experts to Pakistan to develop targeted programs against the locusts. Um, uh, Lu Li Zhu, a senior researcher at the Zhejiang Academy of Agricultural Sciences, told Bloomberg that the ducks are biological weapons. He said that while chickens could eat about 70 locusts in one day, one duck could devour more than uh, three times that number. Ducks like to stay in a group, so they are easier to manage than chickens, he told Chinese media. A trial involving the ducks will take place in China's western Xinjiang province in the coming months, Mr. Liu said. After that, they will be sent to Pakistan's worst affected areas of Sindh, Balochistan, and Punjab provinces. The uh, scheme quickly took hold on Chinese social media. Go ducks! I hope you come back alive. What makes you think they're coming back? Uh, wrote one user on Chinese Twitter like Weibo platform. Heroic ducks in harm's way, said another, in a parody of the description commonly used for medical staff taking to the coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan, or Wuhan. <laughs> However, a professor from Chinese Agriculture University, who is part of the delegation to Pakistan, questioned whether the ducks would be suited to the mainly arid conditions where the locusts are a problem. Yes, yes, ducks rely on water, but Pakistan's desert areas, the temperature is very high, Zoing Long told the reporters in Pakistan. He said that although, although ducks have been used against locusts since ancient times, their deployment hasn't yet entered the government assistance program and was an exploratory method. In the year 2000, China shipped 30,000 ducks from Xinjiang province, or Zhejiang province, to Xinjiang to tackle an infestation of locusts. According to the United Nations, the current heavy infestations can be traced back to the cyclone of 2018-2019, 
that brought heavy rains to the Arabian Peninsula and allowed at least three generations of unprecedented breeding that went undetected. Swarms have since spread out to South Asia and East Africa. So uh, get your get your ducks in a row. <laughs> what the duck? Oh man, <laughs> so there's that for you, ducks. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. Um, what was that song? It was uh, Fly, Flight of the Concord. The robots, the, the robots, the robots kill the people. <laughs> All right, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. The robots killing the people. Oh, man. Is it, is it coming down? Is it coming to life? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, not yet. Not yet, anyway. Not that it's not going to at some point in the future. But I think we're safe at this point. Um, on the Daily Star, which is kind of a... Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, one of those Inquirer-type rags that comes out of uh, the UK. Scientists warn AI superintelligence on the verge of destroying civilization. <laughs> CEO of Allen Institute for AI, Professor Oren Edzioni, issued a series of potential warning signs that would alert us to super intelligence being just around the corner. Oh, no! <laughs> Humans must be... Ro oh, uh, yeah, I can't think of the name of that robot song. It might just be called Robots. Uh, by Flight of the Concords, a comedy group. It's funny, though. Humans must be ready for signs of robotic superintelligence, but should have enough time to address them, a top computer scientist has warned. Oran Itzioni, CEO of Allen Institute for AI, penned a paper recently titled, How to Know if Artificial Intelligence is About to Destroy Civilization. He wrote, Could we wake up one morning, dumbstruck, that a super-powerful AI has emerged with disastrous consequences? Books like Super Intelligence by Nick Bostrom and Life 3.0 by Max Tegmark, as well as more recent articles, argue that malevolent superintelligence is an existential risk to, for humanity. Uh, very existential at this point. But one can speculate endlessly. It's better to ask more concrete, empirical questions. What would alert us that super-intelligent is indeed around the corner? He likened warning signs to canaries in coal mines, which were used to detect carbon monoxide because they would collapse. Professor Enzoni argued that these warning signs come when AI programs develop a new capability. He continued for MIT Review, could the famous Turing uh, test serve as a canary? The test, invented by Alan Turing in 1950, points that human-level AI will be reached when a person cannot distinguish conversing with a human from conversing with a computer. It's important to test, but it's not a canary. It's rather the sign that human-level AI has already arrived Many computer scientists believe that if that moment does arrive, superintelligence will quickly follow. We will need more immediate milestone, intermediate milestones. But he did warn that automatic formulation of learning problems would be the first canary, followed by self-driving cars. He encouraged limited self-driving cars, but that would become one ca a canary once human-level driving is achieved because driving requires real-time decisions based on unpredictable physical world and interaction with human drivers. Professor Etzioni then referenced AI doctors as the third because the ability to understand people, language, and medicine like a human doctor does. And finally... He named potential ability of AI to understand people and motivations as the fourth canary. 
He added, I said to Alexa, my trophy doesn't fit into my carry-on because it's too large. What should I do? Alexa's answer was, I don't know that one. Thankfully, Alexa is not <laughs> there yet. Since Alexa can't reason about the size of objects, it can't decide whether it refers to the trophy or the carry-on. When AI can't understand the meaning of it, it's hard to believe it is poised to take over the world. If Alexa were able to have substantive uh, dialogue on a rich topic, that would be a fourth canary. Luckily, he believes his list demonstrates how far off we are away from super intelligence and that we will have a comfortable amount of time to deploy off switches. Off switches should be standard, by the way. Um, if, <laughs> off switches should be the normal thing to have uh, there uh, on your on your artificial intelligences. If, if you don't know uh, about that, then um, I, don't, I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, I'm looking at some images that were posted there. <laughs> oh, Cowboy Tech posted a photo of a gnome. Uh, it says, I need this at my door, and it's a gnome with a go-away sign, and he's flipping you off. <laughs> Hansel posted a typical Redditor image not registered to vote voted for hillary protest against capitalism right, capitalism writes blog using a macbook pro supports expansion of welfare pays no taxes hates wall street financially supported by trust fund uh, considers fox news fake news it is but reads huffpo buzzfeed and cnn demands that every private business serve everyone and demands that reddit ban Slash R slash the Donald. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that's uh, humorous to a small amount of the population. I am sure. <laughs> All right. I thought I had another robot one here. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I'll get to that later. Wait, what's that? What's that? What was that? Yep, okay. No, all right. Oh, that's a great one. I'll do I'll say I'll 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 click that one up for later. I don't like politics, but we'll we'll cover it. Um we'll, we'll cover that one too. That's a good one too. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll come back. All right. We're going to play some more music right now right here. This first track, I do believe, is a Mr. Rome's request. So uh, let's do that one, and then we'll get to some other ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, this is uh, the Bloodhound Gang. All right, all right. Little Led Zeppelin there for you, courtesy of Cowboy Tech. Thank you for that, Cowboy. Uh, uh, that was rock and roll, by the way, rock and roll. Uh, from 1973. Before that, we heard ZZ Top heard it on the X, uh, and we kicked it off there with a, uh, a Rome's request there. Bloodhound Gang, along comes Mary. <laughs> uh, so uh, JJ from uh, St. Louis here, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, is pointing out the fact that uh, they are right about the facial hair thing, that the facial hair will get in the seal and let stuff through. It's true. That's true. However, CNN was just lying. That's I was just pointing out that CNN was lying, um, which, uh, no real surprise there, is it? That CNN was lying? That's what they do. They lie. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of their deal. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a long one. All right. Um. Okay, okay, that's fine, that's cool, that's good. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm talking to myself a little bit here as I post up some <laughs> new songs for the next set coming up. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, you know, uh, 
CNN just wants to make crap up, they do. And and they report it as, hey, this is news. It's not news. Oh, wow, that's a long one, too. Okay, well, that next set will be a long one. And what time we got here? 11.20. All right, we'll save that for later. Terrific. <laughs> okay, let's see what else we got to tell you about. Oh. All right, here we go. Okay, voters. <laughs> you know who you are. On Reason, Reason.com came this article earlier um, this week. Monday, something like that? 24th? Yeah, Monday. So on Reason.com came this article. And, I, and I'd like to talk to you voters about this. <laughs> Competing brands of authoritarianism are all Trump and the Democratic candidates offer. The real resistance is made up of those who refuse to be governed by any of the wannabe rulers. Do presidential debates have you considering likely places to stash your cash? Do political polling results have you contemplating waiting it all out in a mountain retreat? Rest assured, you are not overreacting. You're sensibly responding to a political culture that has turned very welcome, uh, turned very welcoming to authoritarian candidates and intrusive policies. There's a good chance that freedom in the days to come will be most available to those willing to hide from the state, break its laws, and sabotage its efforts. If presidential types wants however, insincerely, warned that government is not the solution to the problem, our problem, government is the problem, Ronald Reagan, uh, or promise that the era of big government is over. I'm not sure who said that. Um, the current crop of candidates preferred to offer up the state as the provider of all our needs, the soother of every concern, and the slayer of all of our foes especially those nasty fellow citizens who think and live differently. Incumbent President Donald Trump has spent much of his first term catering to xenophobia. He demonizes foreigners, whether they want to come here as immigrants or just sell products to Americans. Immigration restrictions and protectionism inherently require a larger and more intrusive role for the state leaving little room for a government that will just leave you the hell alone. That trademark and migration uh, restrictions both inflict domestic damage, economic damage, seems largely irrelevant to his supporters who embrace nativism a cause as a cause in place of leaving people free to make their own way in this world. The Democrats, who hope to unseat Trump, have also sidelined any talk of liberty in favor of appeals to envy and the desire for stuff paid for by somebody else. The wealth tax, favored by candidates including Sanders and Warren, is likely unconstitutional, as if that matters. It's, bound, it's also bound to cripple economic dynamism uh, while driving the rich who not only have more money than you and I, but better financial advisors to hide their cash overseas. Many of the president's rivals are fond of promising free stuff, like college. It's a tempting offer for students groaning under debt burdens who don't realize that earlier government's attempts to make college more accessible uh, play a big role in soaring tuition. And never mind that free college is going to cheapen the value of the resulting credentials, putting the supposed rewards of the policy further out of reach. Candidates of both major parties offer something else that is likely to be expensive in the long run, an opportunity to punish rival political tribes through the force of law. Amidst, uh, amidst uh, lots of huffing and puffing about deplorables and coastal elites, most of the candidates get lots of mileage 
out of channeling the partisan rage that too many Americans feel towards their fellow countrymen. Actually, those kind of insults are becoming quaint, since calling your opponents traitors is the popular new way of expressing strong disagreement. And political disagreement these days really are strong. Just over 42% of the people in each party view the opposition as downright evil, according to the research published last year by Nathan Calmo and Lillian Mason, political scientists at Louisiana State University and the University of Maryland. Violence would be justified if the opposing party wins 2020 presidential election, says 18%. Of, of the surveyed Democrats and 13% of Republicans. Violence would be justified if the opposing party wins the 2020 presidential election. Uh, there's not a lot of room for live and let live in satisfying the demands of supporters who want to battle the downright evil enemies. <laughs> in this climate of political animosity, it's no surprise that leading candidates of the moment have lots of comfort with wielding the power of the state. In addition to his taste for border controls and trade wars, the president has a pension for threatening to use government against those who annoy him. Trump threatened both tax and antitrust actions against Amazon explicitly linking his threats to the criticism of his administration by the Washington Post, which shares Jeff Bezos as an owner. Michael Bloomberg won Reason's uh, ranking in 2013 as the number one enemy of freedom for his nanny state approach to public health and personal choice, as well as his enthusiasm for gun control, his illegal crackdown on pot smokers, and his unflagging defense of the New York Police Department's stop-and-frisk program. It really wasn't the New York Police Department's stop-and-frisk program. It was Bloomberg's stop-and-frisk uh, program. Anyway, current Democratic frontrunner Sanders appears to have, we hope, abandoned his early support for government takeovers of businesses, including utilities and the oil industry. Likewise, he's no longer affiliated with the Trotskyite Socialist Workers Party doesn't mean he doesn't still believe what they believe uh, but his brand of democratic socialism apparently offers lots of wiggle room for unilateral action including dozens of executive orders his campaign has reportedly prepared as a means of bypassing congressional opposition to his policies if he wins the presidency if he's appointed to the presidency, that should say. That's not to say that Trump or his Democratic opponents are purely authoritarian across the board. The president has promoted reductions in business regulation and promoted school choice among the positive moves of his administration. Sanders calls for reigning in the surveillance state. Bloomberg slams his party's drift toward socialism in general, and Sanders' history in particular, long-shot ca uh, candidate Representative Tulsi Gabbard even wants to end drug prohibition. You don't hear much about Tulsi anymore. I think they're pretty much sidelander. But these aren't the defining issues in a campaign in which candidates rarely propose leaving people alone, and no major party candidate has made a real made that a central feature of his or her campaign. Instead, this has turned into an election season defined by different flavors of control freakery. Freakery! Did you hear me? Freakery! <laughs> control freakery. The control freaks are out of control. Competing proposals to expand government and warnings about the awesome power of the state to squash domestic opposition. For those of us not looking for goodies or political thuggery, but for more breathing room instead, there is very, very little encouragement to be found in the debates and the polls. Instead, we have to look for loopholes in laws, exceptions to intrusive policies, and ways to confound taxmen and inspectors. Our real votes will be for preferred encryption software, places to hide our money and information, and caches 
for, for, for forbidden goods. If we want to retain or expand our freedom, we'll need to stay under the radar as we ignore the powers that be, or else make ourselves more trouble to push around than we are worth. While Trump's Democratic opponents have spent years since the last presidential election valorizing themselves as the resistance, all they have to offer is a competing brand of authoritarianism. The real resistance is made up of those, like yourselves, like myself, who refuse to be governed by any wannabe rulers. Thank you very much for that post and your opinion, J.D. Tucile, I guess, T-U-C-C-I-L-L-E, uh, on, on Reason.com. <laughs> Freakers! Yes. <laughs> so, uh, I, I really like that. That's, that's, that's a good post. Okay, we're going to run a, a quick set here. That was a long post to read. And then uh, maybe if I come back, I'll, I'll cover that, that one more article. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're going to kick it off here with this here. And then uh, we'll come back on some other stuff. <laughs> oh, did I do this right? I hope I did this right. All right, we'll find out as we go along, I guess. Uh, this is Patty Smith. All right. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if any of you know why I showed you that video clip there. Um, <laughs> but let me tell you. Uh, that 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 video is called Neo takes the blue pill. If you remember the Matrix, which hopefully most of you remember the Matrix, Neo took the red pill. The red pill led him into Wonderland, and he got to see what was going on and how things really were working. The other part of that was Neo Keanu Reeves thrown into the Office Space movie. Office Space, one of my other, another one of my favorite movies, uh, starring Ron Livingston. But throughout that, throughout that video, uh, you see Keanu Reeves as Ron Livingston. It's a deep fake. They call it a deep fake. <laughs> oh, it's very interesting how I mean it's 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 what they can do, and uh, so they could put anybody into any any video situation they felt like doing. Uh, it's 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 kind of trippy, um, but uh, they, they can do it uh, should should they decide they want to. For whatever reason, you know, um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit weird, but they can do it. Um, and that's just, that's why I showed you that clip. Uh, you know, not beyond the fact that it's a couple of my favorite movies. Um. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Whew. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay, we'll come back to that. All right, I got how much time do I got? Okay, four, four minutes. I got about four minutes. Okay, I can, I can just be, I can't really go through all of this here. For you, but I wanted to give you the at least the uh, the flavor of the of the thing because everybody sees this uh, coronavirus stuff going on and they're freaking out about it. So uh, maybe you got something something else to freak out about. Ten plagues that are hitting our planet simultaneously. Uh, this posted up on zerohedge.com by Michael Snyder of uh, the End of the American Dream blog. Um, <laughs> here it is. Just all of a sudden, a really crazy, really crazy things are starting to happen all over the world. Giant swarms of locusts are absolutely devastating entire regions. Extremely unusual storms are confounding meteorologists. Earthquake and volcanic activity are both on the rise. Five dangerous diseases are sweeping across the globe. So far in 2020, it has just been one thing after another. And many are specula speculating about what could be ahead if events continue to escalate. The other day, my wife mentioned that one of her friends suggested that I should put together a list of all the weird stuff that has been taking place, and so that's what I decided to do. So I'll just buzz through these here. 
Uh, number one, armies of locusts. Number two, extreme bizarre weather patterns. Number three, unprecedented flooding. Number four, major earthquakes. Number five, unusual volcanic eruptions. Number six is the coronavirus. Number seven is the African swine fever, or pig Ebola, if you will. Uh, good to see you too, JJ. Uh, all right. Number eight, the H1N1 swine flu. Number nine, the H5N1 bird flu. Number 10, the H5N8 bird flu. <laughs> uh, can, any, can any of you remember a time when we have been hit by crisis after crisis like this all at once? 2020 has started, certainly started off with quite a bang, and many expect global events to continue to accelerate. So hold on to your hats! Because things are likely to get even crazier in the months ahead. And he's got details here about all these various uh, uh, events that are plagues that are going on right now. And, and he doesn't even mention the uh, all the political nonsense going on. Because that in itself, I consider that a plague. Um, <laughs> oh, man. All right. Okay. So uh, let's... Uh, let's uh, Let's uh, let's let's go this way. A little bit of Betty Page for you all. Um, doing a little thing that she does or did. And she she don't do this no more because she ain't around anymore. But Betty Page. Oh, Black Betty, yes indeed. That's a Ram Jam, Ram Ram Jam. Uh, they're playing the song and and uh, Betty Page. Dancing to the Ram Jam. Um, <laughs> oh man! Uh, well, if you're not familiar with Betty Page uh, Hansel, there, look her up. Uh, she was quite the sensation uh, back in the day. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, anyway, thank you all for tuning in to the uh, Freakers Ball here tonight. And uh, I don't know where Moose Girl is. I hope she's feeling better. I uh, hope she's doing all right. Uh, we miss you, Moose. Uh, so hopefully she'll be back next week with us. I, I will, we'll see. Uh, anyway, um, what else? Oh, tomorrow's the dark table uh, at noon Eastern with Flash and who knows who else. So check him out. I'll be on Sunday at – oh, Flash is not at noon Eastern. He's at 2 p.m. Eastern. Excuse me. I'm thinking of the old time. Uh, the old time slot. Uh, I'll be on at noon Eastern on Sunday, however, with the Blues, and we'll be playing the trivia here in the chat, followed up by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up the big old can of whoop-ass. Check out the schedule over there on reallibertymedia.com for all the rest of the shows coming up throughout the week. Uh, donate, donate, donate to Real Liberty Media. You got, uh, well, the, the donation drive lasts through tomorrow, and then it expires, but you can still donate any time of the year. And, um, yeah, just uh, come on, you know, be part of Real Liberty Media. We love you here. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks to everybody. I love you all. Thanks for being part of Real Liberty Media. Peace.